Welcome to our lecture online. In many ways, we owe our existence to the fact that the Earth has these vast oceans. 71% of the Earth's surface is covered by oceans and seas, and if you add all the lakes and rivers together with the oceans, you now at almost three quarters of the Earth's surface is covered by water, rivers, lakes, and oceans and, and seas. So why is that important, and why do, our, do we owe our existence to that? Well, there's many reasons, but what we're going to do here is concentrate on the temperature differences and the temperature reasons why these oceans are so incredibly important. If you take any area of land that is near the ocean, if you live somewhere near the ocean, the difference in the temperature between winter and summer is typically no more than about 10 degrees Celsius. But if you live far inland, in the Sahara Desert, in Siberia, in the middle of North America, you will find places where the difference in temperature between, the, between winter and summer can be as much as 30 or 40 degrees Celsius. Huge temperature differences because you're so far away from the oceans that the ocean's cooling and warming effect no longer have that much of an influence on you. When you're close to the coast, much more so. The way that works is as follows. Again, water has this incredible property besides expanding when it freezes and being most dense at minus four degrees Celsius and providing this enormous blanket of greenhouse effect around the Earth to keep the Earth nice and warm. Earth also has a tremendously high heat coefficient, more so than any other substance that we know of. And because of that, what that means is that water can absorb an enormous amount of heat without changing much in temperature. So these vast oceans that cover almost three quarters of the surface of the Earth can absorb a tremendous amount of energy and store that. And then when winter comes and things cool down, they can, re, they can put that energy back into the atmosphere and keep the winters from getting brutally cold. So in the summer, they can absorb an enormous amount of heat to keep the summers from getting too hot, and in the wintertime they can give that heat back to the atmosphere and keep the atmosphere from getting too cold and from the Earth to getting cold. So it's a tremendous thermostat, so to speak. It, it keeps the Earth in a very nice climate range because of the vast oceans. If you go to Siberia in the summertime, it can easily get up to 20, 25 degrees Celsius on a nice day. And in the wintertime, it can get down to minus 50, minus 60 degrees Celsius. Think of that tremendous temperature difference because being so far away from any bodies of water that can then keep the temperature nice and comfortable between winter and summer. Water also has a very high latent heat of fusion. Oh, I shouldn't say fusion, I should say evaporation. Let's of evaporation. Let's do that. Evaporation. The first statement was true, but that's not as important as the latent heat of evaporation. The reason why that's so important is because a lot of the sunlight that hits the surface of the Earth, of course, hits oceans and lakes and rivers. It then causes that water to be evaporated, that rises into the atmosphere, and that requires an enormous amount of energy, about 540 calories for every gram of water that is evaporated. And because of that, the Earth can absorb an enormous amount of heat by evaporating water due to the sunshine hitting the water. That water that's evaporated then turns into clouds and those clouds will then shield the earth from the sunlight to a great extent again cooling the earth so the effect of absorbing an enormous amount of heat when it's evaporated then clouds are, are being formed that then cause the earth to be shielded from the rays of the sun keeping it cool so all these properties of water again forms a nice controlling mechanism to keep the earth from getting too hot and too cold and finally, you can then say oceans are these vast temperature regulators. Now imagine living on a planet, the terrestrial planet, where only a quarter of the surface was water and three quarters was land. Presumably that's what Mars probably looked like. If that's the case, those oceans would not nearly have the effect and the temperature between summer and winter, day and night would be vastly different and would make it very difficult for life to exist then you probably would have also these vast regions that would be extremely dry and arid, it would be desert, the vast majority of the earth would be desert, and so whatever land was available, very little of it would be able to be used and life could barely exist. Imagine walking through the Sahara Desert 
And imagine that would be much of the world if our oceans were much smaller. But because we have these vast oceans and we have this water circulation, we don't have these tremendous differences in temperatures and we have places where there's plenty of moisture for life to exist. Again, it's almost miraculous that we live on a planet that has these vast oceans. If that wasn't the case, we probably wouldn't be here to talk about it.